Good afternoon, all. Uh, I'd first uh, thank the organizers for this uh, opportunity. So uh, this uh, talk is a surgical video demonstration with uh, concepts of nodal dissection uh, in thyroid cancers, the rationale and the method. So uh, as we uh, embark uh, with this lecture, I think just to refresh our memories about the anatomical boundaries of the central compartments. Uh, so basically, uh, we are going to dwell on the central compartment. The lateral compartment comes later because always the debate for thyroid cancer dissection is around the central compartment. So and the lateral compartment is more or less the same, which we r routinely do for most of the other head neck cancers. So coming on to the, uh, the boundaries, the superiorly the boundary is the hyoid bone, inferiorly the innominate artery, and laterally on either side is the uh, common carotid artery. So this is, uh, you know, by and large the boundary of the central compartment. So you have the central compartment on the right and the left side, you have the pre-laryngeal node above the cricoid and lower down up to the innominate vessels. Now, uh, coming on to uh, the central compartment, it is divided uh, again within the central compartment as the pre-laryngeal or the pre-cricoid node, the also known as the Delphian node. And you have the paratracheal node which is on either sides of the trachea. And we have the pre-tracheal nodes till the innominate vessels. And rarely you have the retropharyngeal and the retroesophageal nodes, which is not commonly involved in thyroid cancers, but it can be involved at times. So these are the nodes, a uh, group of nodes in the central compartment that we need to be aware of. Now one thing that we need to know about the central compartment is the, the central compartment on the right side is slightly different from the central compartment on the left side. What we need to understand is the right side, the central compartment is more like a three-dimensional space, whereas in the left side, the central compartment is more of a two-dimensional space. We'll understand as to why it is. Because on the right side, as the uh, as you can see here, the, the recurrent laryngeal nerve comes around the, you know, the subclavian and then as it ascends up, it comes from, you know, lateral to medial, as we all know. As it does that, there is a space which is anterior to the recurrent laryngeal nerve and posterior to the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So when we are trying to do a central compartment clearance on the right side, what we need to understand is it's not enough just to do the clearance anterior to the nerve. We need to understand that the, no the nodes can be there beneath the recurrent laryngeal nerve as well. So that we need to understand to do a good clearance. Whereas on the left side, it's a two-dimensional plane where you don't have this, you know, a nodal, uh, uh, you know, uh, disease beneath the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So it's either on the side of it or over the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So this is the subtle difference between the right and the left side of the uh, central compartments which we need to be aware of and uh, when we are about to plan uh, you know uh, whether we need to uh, address the central compartment or not what we need to do is do a proper imaging uh, pre-operatively uh, you know to plan the nodal dissection not just the central compartment even the lateral compartment so when all would you do a central compartment clearance this these are the standard indications when you have a palpable clinical node in the presence of a large tumor which is you know and bulky nodal metastasis when there are multiple nodal metastasis it's more uh, pertinent to do a ct scan because you might have parapharyngeal and retropharyngeal nodes which might be missed otherwise and also it is but it's it, it, we must also look at these areas when the multiple nodes and of course when there is you know compressive symptoms in terms of dysphagia or you know vocal cord uh, dysfunction so what does the recommendations say about nodal dissection in thyroid cancers now if you look attend various conferences on thyroid cancers always the nodal uh, you know doing a neck dissection or a central compartment dissection is always uh, you know controversial because the latest American Thyroid Association guidelines say less is more for thyroid cancer, meaning to say we have to do the central compartment or nodal dissection for thyroid cancer only when necessary because these patients do well, they have good survival, so we want to minimize the morbidity for these patients. That's the bottom line. So the last, I mean, what we generally follow is the American Thyroid uh, Association guidelines, which is well structured and reasoned out. So that's why it is generally followed. And the last one that was updated was in, in 2015. The 2020 guideline was, was delayed due to COVID for obvious reasons and we can expect the latest version coming sometime next year. So the central compartment dissection, when do we do a therapeutic dissection is when there is a, a, a clinically involved central compartment node 
which can be made out uh, preoperatively, clinical radiologically. It's a strong recommendation based on moderate quality evidence. Now, when do we do a prophylactic central compartment dissection? The controversy is hugely around the prophylactic central compartment dissection because of the morbidity associated with the recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy and more importantly, the hypocalcemia subsequently. So in advanced primary, like a T3, T4 thyroid cancers, clinically involved lateral neck node and in the presence of extra thyroidal extension. These are weak recommendations with low quality evidences, but then this is what we generally also see in clinical practice. Now, what exactly is a central compartment dissection? It implies comprehensive removal of pretracheal, prelaryngeal lymph nodes along with at least one paratracheal nodal basin. It can be done bilaterally. Uh, and uh, the side and indication for the central compartment dissection, when it is done, should be mentioned specifically in the operative nodes. Because these differentiated thyroid cancers, especially even medullary for that matter, the main problem is local recurrence. So that needs to be mentioned in the OR notes so that if there is a recurrence, if and when, you have those notes and you can act accordingly. And focal berry picking of only clinically involved nodes without a compartmental dissection leads to a higher rate of recurrences and should be abandoned. So it has to be a proper central compartment dissection, not just berry picking. And central compartment dissection, either elective or therapeutic, that is prophylactic or therapeutic, is a comprehensive central compartment dissection when it needs to be done. Now, the main issue as to the debate as to whether the central compartment needs to be done or not is because of the parathyroid glands and the recurrent laryngeal nerve. More so for the parathyroid glands because it gives rise to the uh, hypocalcemia. So when we are doing a central compartment, we need to identify the parathyroid glands and save it with the vascular pedicle whenever possible. If the parathyroid glands appears non-viable at the end of the dissection, it needs to be removed and then auto-transplanted. If, you're not, if we are unable to identify the parathyroid glands, the central compartment dissection needs to be thoroughly inspected at the end of the dissection. We need to identify the tissue that appears to be a parathyroid gland. A small portion of it can be sent for frozen to confirm that it's a parathyroid gland and then it needs to be auto-transplanted in the sternoclerostomastoid muscle. And there is good, good evidence uh, in literature to support that these function over a few weeks of time in the post-op regains function. And these are one such parathyroid glands which are preserved with its intact blood supply during a surgery. The other thing is that we need to uh, know is, of course, we need to save the recurrent laryngeal nerve, but what we need to be aware of is the extra laryngeal branching of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. 30 to 78 percent of the times, the recurrent laryngeal nerve, before it enters into the larynx, can branch into two or more branches. A maximum of up to five branching, branching has been reported. And it's very important because we need to save these branches because the anterior branches tend to have motor function and when that is damaged, the vocal cord palsy might uh, ensue in the post-op. Whereas the posterior branch has more sensory function and may give rise to dysphagia. When there is palsy, the incidence of vocal cord palsy is almost double. Uh, uh, sorry, when there is branching, the incidence of vocal cord palsy is almost double when compared to when there's no branching. So these, uh, this uh, has to be kept in mind when we are doing a central compartment dissection. Now with this background, we'll just, uh, you know, look at this video of uh, uh, central compartment clearance. This was actually done by uh, Professor Devendra Chauka. So I, I'm showing you just the edited video of that. And so the circle uh, shows that the area where the parathyroid glands are there and also there's a nodal disease beneath that. That is the inferior thyroid artery. That is the uh, common carotid vessel. And when we're doing a central compartment clearance, what we need to do is first open the carotid uh, uh, fascia, expose the common carotid vessel from lower down till the level of the, at least the cricoid uh, uh, bone. Uh, and then lower down till the innominate artery. So we expose the, the common carotid vessel going lower down. If we can identify the parathyroid, uh, you know, that must have been identified and preserved even while doing a total thyroidectomy. Here the total thyroidectomy is already done. What is being shown is just the central compartment clearance. So we're just going down along the uh, common carotid vessel towards the innominate artery and there is a lot of nodal disease there. So here in this case, the superior parathyroid gland is preserved and, uh, you know, secured, whereas the inferior parathyroid gland, we, we made an attempt, but it could not be preserved because of the extent of nodal disease, which was auto-transplanted subsequently. So we need to mobilize all the, the nodal disease around. Here, the recurrent laryngeal nerve was going through the nodal disease. So that is why we had to take the lateral and medial approach first, rather than following the recurrent laryngeal nerve 
from superiorly inferior uh, to the inferior direction, which will be evident in the uh, subsequent. You can see the superior parathyroid gland here, which is preserved. It's nice and viable there. The opposite superior parathyroids were also preserved, both in inferior and superior. So at least if we preserve three parathyroid glands, the incidence of post-operative hypercalcemia can be minimized. Now here we are just working on the recurrent laryngeal nerve. And it's very important not to handle the recurrent laryngeal nerve in a, uh, uh, in a very, you know, um, careless manner, not to hold it with the forceps. Just work around it, just mobilize it laterally and medially rather than just picking it up with the forceps because that may predispose the nerve to develop palsy subsequently. So we're just working on the recurrent laryngeal nerve going from above downwards and taking and using the bipolar. It's very essential that either you use a bipolar or any other energy device like the, uh, 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 you can use the, the harmonic scalpel as well. So we have mobilized the, you can see this is the central compartment node above the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Now we are working below the recurrent laryngeal nerve at this plane because there is a lot of nodal disease even at that area there. So it's, you can see the nodal disease going lower down at the level where the recurrent laryngeal nerve goes around the subclavian artery and ascends up from lateral to medial. So when we are working in this area, the blood supply of the parathyroid is more Moral, uh, you can take it for granted that it's going to be compromised. So it's very important to identify the parathyroid in the specimen and if you can identify it, best is to order transplant it. So it has to be meticulously dissected and, and the thing is it, it's better to remove it on block rather than remove one node at a time because the nodes in the central compartment all comes together in a on block fashion. If you remove one node, it may probably sink in, into the superior mediastinum. So to avoid that, we'll have to remove it on block as well. And here you see the node is beneath the recurrent laryngeal nerve. And at one point you will see that it is almost adherent to the central compartment node, which needs to be, you know, the nerve needs to be freed from the nodal mass with the help of a sharp dissection. If you notice here, we're not holding the nerve at any point. We are just hold, handling the tissue in and around the recurrent laryngeal nerve rather than holding the nerve, which is very important to retain the function of the nerve. Now here, at this point, we are using a sharp, a sharp uh, dissection here because it is adherent to the nodal mass. And then once that is done, the entire nodal mass, the central compartment clearance here is achieved. Again, just to reiterate the fact not to handle the nerve, at any point, just to mobilize the nerve on either direction around the uh, area where the dissection is being done. So the entire nodal mass is removed both from above the nerve as well as from beneath the recurrent laryngeal nerve. At this point, if it is very close to the esophagus, we need to be very careful of the planes which probably will be, you know, uh, the information will be available to us with the preoperative imaging itself. So that plan has to be made prior. So at this point, we are working closer to the esophagus. We have to be very careful that we, have, we know as to what the planes between the nodal mass and the esophagus is a priori. The nodal mass is out and then now we are confirming the functioning of the nerve with the intraoperative nerve monitoring and you can see the signals there which are nice and clear and after that at the end of the dissection the nerve is, func is still functioning. So even in the absence of pre-op, that this was in a clinically and radiologically N plus neck. Now, even in the absence of preoperatively apparent N1 disease, surgeons must assess all the central compartment, sub -compa central compartment uh, areas intraoperatively through visualization, inspection, and palpation. And if there's any suspicious node that is seen in the central compartment, it can be sampled and sent for frozen section. If it turns out to be positive, then we need to do a, a formal central compartment dissection. So this is a video which just te I mean shows, demonstrates the central compartment inspection. So once we have done a total thyroidectomy, again this is the 
head end and this is the uh, the foot end and this is the right central compartment we can see the recurrent laryngeal nerve here and that is the common carotid area that is the superior aspect and that is the inferior aspect of the and this is the trachea here this is the trachea and this is the inferior aspect of the central compartment and that is the superior portion so we just need to open the fascia on the nerve and then dissect that soft tissue there to identify if there's any yeah so we all know the impact of prognos prognostic, uh, you know, the lymph node doesn't, uh, you know, impact survival, but it does recur and that adds to the morbidity. And we need to do a lateral neck dissection if it is positive or when the central compartment is positive. And disease like this, there is no question, you need to do a, central com a lateral compartment dissection. And we need to do a two to five lateral compartment dissection. And this is one of the uh, work that was done wherein we showed when should we do the lateral compartment you can see the odds ratio which is 81 that is the chances of lateral compartment dissection is the highest when you have a positive central compartment so you need to address the lateral compartment if there is a positive central compartment the other factors predicting lateral compartment load metastasis in the presence of extrathyroidal extension and high grade histopathology and we all know these the, the ATA risk stratification in this is one unpublished data wherein the nodal burden at the Tatas where between 2012 to 2018, uh, more than 1,000 uh, thyroidectomies, total thyroidectomies, the nodal burden was close to 60%, more than five nodes. So that is at least intermediate, is fifth, close to 60%. And there were no nodes which are less than 0.2, which is considered to be a low risk. And the external extension was present in up to 73% of the patients, which is not taken into consideration in any of the risk stratification, but it does make a reference in your, difference in your uh, recurrences. So to conclude, the nodal burden in thyroid cancer, especially in DTC, is a significant clinical problem. Central and lateral compartments should be carefully evaluated preoperatively and a plan made. And interoperative techniques to preserve the RLN and parathyroids must be undertaken. Thank you.